let's look at the tail of the tape. 31, the younger man, Godbeer. Look at that height advantage, six foot four to five foot ten. Then look at the two records. These men bang them out. I can't wait for this one. So let's get this on with our master of ceremonies, Buddy Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. When the action begins, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is sponsored by SportsDirect.com and Lonsdale and Lonsdale, London. Shadow sanctioned by the UK MMA Federation. Commentators tonight, Malcolm Martin and Chris Hooksbra. When the action begins, our judges, Andy Shepard, Kevin Carpel, and Paul Sutherland, and timekeeper, Matt Whiten. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for three five-minute rounds in the professional heavyweight division. This is a title bout to crown the heavyweight champion of the world. Introducing first, fighting at the blue corner. A stand-up fighter stands six feet, four inches tall, and weighted at 248 pounds, with an impressive record of nine wins, two losses, and zero draws, with seven of those wins by TKO. Representing all or nothing from Bridgewater, Somerset in England, Mark the Hand of God And his opponent standing in the red corner, an all around fighter standing five feet ten inches tall and weighted at 258 pounds with an impressive record of nine wins, three losses, and zero draws. With nine of those wins by Presenting built up local roots and Atherton submission wrestling from Birmingham, England. He is the current UC MMA champion and sprawl and brawl champion, Paul the Titan Taylor. When the action begins, your referee in charge, Mark Goddard. Gentlemen, you understand the rules you're fighting under. You listen to it all times, keep yourself protected. When I say stop, you stop. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Let's do this. So, Chris, the atmosphere has just gone through the roof here. Huge support for both men. Both, everybody knows, carries genuinely explosive power. You just can't see this one going out the first round. Mark the hand of Godbeer and Paul the Titan Taylor. It is electric in here. I can barely hear myself, let alone you. I've got goosebumps, Malcolm. Well, the thing here for me, going back to a classic matchup, especially with the haymaker David Hay here, this is for me Lennox Lewis versus Mike Tyson. Can the Lennox Lewis of our fight, Mark Godbeer, keep the Mike Tyson of our fight, Paul Taylor away at range, or can Taylor get inside like with the explosive power of Tyson? And Godbeer doing just that now with some good footwork. A little tentative, a little bit of a feeling out process here, and a nice right round kick a moment ago landed. So for me, it's all about range tonight, Chris. Without a doubt, and if you look at all of Taylor's wins in his history, I am waiting for the moment for the powder keg to ignite. He will blitz in and quite literally create the perfect storm. Well, I was talking to, to Godbeer's coach, Arthur Meek, and he said they brought in sparring partners of his height and his power. Godbeer knows the way that Taylor works, and they've been drilling into him not to let him get into that range. Yeah, and speaking of Paul Taylor, I mean, he's been over at American Kickboxing Academy there, training with some of the very best heavyweights in the world. Taylor is a gifted athlete, but just ate another big right round kick, Malcolm. Yes, and you can see Godbeer wants to keep that range. He wants to keep that distance. As soon as Taylor looked to come in, Godbeer moved. And he's being very patient. We're used to seeing him come in, all guns blazing, showing Taylor huge respect here. And I felt that the kicking game was going to be a very defining strategy for Godbeer tonight, but that right hand from Taylor is a missile. Homing in on the target of Godbeer's chin. Another right round kick for Godbeer, very solid. In and out, that's exactly what he needs to well, do to Chris, make this. Well, you know what he's doing. He's saying if this man comes forward deceptively fast, let's take those legs away to stop him doing that. And more importantly, occupy a center ring where he cannot get backed up against the cage. That's where Godbeer generally would not want to be because that's where Taylor makes his best business. Yes, so Godbeer chopping at the legs of Taylor, trying to stop that explosive power by stopping the legs that propel it. And you'll notice the way Godbeer is kind of moving in and out and responding to Taylor's 
footwork. I'd just like to see him moving out of the way, away from that explosive right hand. He's moving towards it in a clockwise manner. He needs to start moving anti-clockwise away from Taylor. Yeah, he's doing that to try to line up that right round kick. As you said, it is dangerous territory when you consider the fact that Taylor has scored most of his significant fight ending shots with the right hand, so... Nice inside leg kick. That one really cracked home on Paul Taylor. It you makes perfect sense, Chris. And you can say the way that his weight shifted from the impact of the thud. Oh, the big one! Taylor took it, but it pushed him back, and you can hear the West Country fans going there. The first meaningful blow is to Godbeer, and he follows it up again. And Taylor looks at him almost like with disdain, Chris. Totally. Mark Godbeer showing off some good maturity and patience here, though, in this bout. He knows he tagged Taylor, but doesn't want to get too over-anxious with his assault. And again, you see, he wants that range kept at a certain level. They've drilled this. He does not want to be in close with Taylor, and he set his stall out early, and at the moment, with just over one and a half minutes left, it's Godbeer's round through his technique and his tactics. Nice left hook from Taylor. We're going to get a little moment here to pull that excess tape off. And we're back underway. Good touch of gloves. Yes, Godbeer has remained very focused with a minute and a half to go. He's not allowed Taylor any chance to use his God-given power. Godbeer was very passionate about his training and preparation and coming into this fight, and he's really ticking all the boxes, moving down the checklist of his really, I guess, surgical pinpoint striking so far. He's not getting lured into Paul's territory where really a firefight could erupt that could go against him. And Paul Taylor will have to start checking these legs. Oh, beautiful movement there from Godbeer when the big right hand came, but he's going to have to start checking those kicks as well, Chris. Yeah, a tremendous performance so far from Mark Godbeer, four minutes in, and Paul Taylor really not able to usher any offense, but the crowd just chanting in this arena, Malcolm. Yeah, so it's really raising that, and it's Taylor's fans that obviously are a bit worried here that are really trying to get behind their man and inspire him. But at the moment, the inspiration is all coming from Godbeer. And Taylor looks pretty calm, pretty collected still. He's not getting phased by this, but those leg kicks are cracking home. Nice check there, though. That was much better. Chris, he's got the equalizer. Remember, he can stay calm. He knows he stopped all nine of his opponents dead. When you carry that equalizing power, you can remain patient. Without a doubt, and Taylor will look to return fire when it suits him best. Thus far, though, the dominating factor has been Godbeer's precision and, most importantly, movement in avoiding the power of Taylor. Oh, he's kept the range perfectly. It's been a textbook opening round. As we come inside the last 10 seconds, it's a big opening round to Godbeer. And Godbeer breathing a little bit there, but staying pretty calm throughout the round. And Taylor, with a little bit of a look of frustration, he moves away to his corner, Malcolm. So, Chris, this is Godbeer at his most focused. And those leg kicks will take their toll on an explosive fighter trying to close the gap. And we saw it there, because it's a great tactic. And that is just perfect technique, the way he opens up his hip, steps in for that right hand as well. I really like the disciplined approach of Mark Godbeer. It's very impressive to see. Coming into a very dangerous fight, and, you know, Taylor got his hands down. Probably a little bit frustrated, more importantly, a little bit flustered from the impact of those kicks, Malcolm. Yes, and there is Mark Godbeer, a great opening round for this young man. He feels this is destiny now, he really wants to step up. And we, we felt this could be a real first round finish. It hasn't proven, so it's been more technical, more time consuming as he picks his shots. What can Taylor bring back? And Chris, you can see the mark on the midsection of Taylor from the round kick of Godbeer. Yeah, his lead leg is really, for those that can't see it, as red as a tomato. And he's been placed into early adversity by Godbeer. And, and again, Chris, when you think about it, what an arena for them. We've heard the crowd. It's a full house here at the Barclay Card Arena for Bama 21. And a lot of that full house is fans of these two big men. Yeah, you can totally hear it every time a leg kick lands, every time Taylor moves forward. There's a lot of support in here for each fighter as they unload their barrage. Big heavyweight title on the line tonight. Bama's first ever champion. Bama 21 setting records, making things happen here in Birmingham Barclay Arena tonight. And you saw Godbeer literally push Taylor away to say that gap is not being closed. What, what excites me, though, Chris, is one lack of concentration one change in focus, 
and it, no matter how much you've done well beforehand, it can all be academic. And the way that Taylor emphasizes that ducking head movement, he's looking to try and fake a shot, but in reality, he has Godbeer's face in his sights with a big right hand. So this could all change in an instant. Nice check from Taylor, it's much better now. Yes, he's gonna have to check, but Godbeer closes the gap when he feels like it steps out very quickly. So Taylor has also got timing issues now. He knows to land that right where he needs to be. Godbeer is never very long in that space. And Mark Godbeer looking to keep his title run coming here with a successful game plan. He's really set back Taylor, I think, so far. Taylor's got his hands down. You know, he looks calm, looks collected, but I think this has been a blistering pace by Godbeer so far. And again, he just clips with that right hand as Taylor ducks. You wonder when the, the right hand overhand reply from Taylor will come, because at the moment, He's, he's been lured into Mark Godbeer's game plan. Yeah, you can see the intent. There we go, see what I mean? That and big, he's limping now. For yeah. the first time he limped from that shot. I was going to say, that big left hook shows exactly what he's looking for, but you know, it's a big fight for Taylor. He's coming here tonight, a Bama newcomer, against a guy who's 2-0, and so that might be a little bit of a factor as we continue on in round two here, Malcolm. But also, Chris, watch Taylor's legs, the way he switches. He's trying to nag from the today, that left leg. He switches quite constantly because that left leg is now in real danger. A wise decision. I'd like to see him do that a little bit more often, but actually do it and land punches. You hear the crowd cheer as he comes forward. There's a lot There's of support. There's the cut, though, from Taylor, the first one. That was what I was saying. There's a big build-up in the way he's looking to try and land that. And it definitely unsettled Godbeer. You can see the way Godbeer moves away. And he's got to keep chopping at that leg because Taylor will find it harder and harder to come forward to tee off that Ooh. big right hand. Ooh, that was a big one. Keeps that, at those legs. Yeah, I was going to say that right kick landed real nice and so did that right cross. And the left hook from Godbeer as well. Doing it on the top of the head. Luckily, Taylor ducked the head at the last second there. Just excellent technique from Godbeer. Really showing off why he has the hands of a divine being here tonight. And he's really addressed a lot of the holes in his defense. You know, Taylor has not been able to find a way in it. That's a scary dude to be in with the cage for 15 minutes. That's the only place Godbert doesn't want to be. I know he landed the knee, but that is the only danger zone for him here. And again, the right lands the double. Oh, and the left to the head as well. The, the double got the round outs and then the big knee. Oh, my Taylor, goodness. Taylor, that bleeding, calls him on. That's what Taylor wants. What? He needs Godbert to get him carried away. What a fight, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a big one happening. Oh. Wow, Paul Taylor is a tough customer. That guy has a chin as hard as granite. But Chris, Godbeer can't get carried away, even when he's backed up like that. That's where Taylor wants him. He wants Godbeer to get complacent, get in to finish the job. Then he's in range. At the moment, Taylor has just not had the range that he wants here. As the blood streams down Paul Taylor's face, he's got a look of determination in his eyes moving to this last minute, Malcolm. I think he's got to make something happen or he's going to have to finish it come round three. Let's talk about round three. Who thought it would have gone round one, let alone round two? And it's the patience and discipline of Godbeer. Oh, and there's the knee again! Oh, what has Taylor made of? Wow! He's just walking forward, he's just taken three knees! Jarring Man, knees! Godbeer turns with the right hands as well, but this is what Taylor wants. How's that man still stood there, Chris? I can't believe it! This guy has taken punishment to the nth degree here, and just... Dips his chin and keeps waltzing forward. Unbelievable stuff here. Godbeer has hit him with knees, right hands. All he needs is to tear up the kitchen sink and throw it at him, and he's still there. They say it's all over. It's all over. Oh! Conard has looked at his face. He doesn't like what he's seen. And Godbeer is the champion. Godbeer. He's the heavyweight champion. What a performance from Mark Godbeer. Taylor, have you ever seen anyone so tough? And yet, the referee said, I have seen enough. Unbelievable. Godbeer literally screaming to us here on commentary position. I'm back. I am back. Pointing a finger. 3-0. Paul Taylor went after him with all of the fire he could muster. But it just was not enough, Malcolm. Well, Mark Godbeer is now the heavyweight champion. And what a performance to do it. And we'll take a look at the replay here of that fight ending performance. You can see that right round kick was his bread and butter throughout. And it really cut down Paul Taylor's movements. And then the left, and he doubles it up here, Chris, for the face as well. How is Taylor still there? And a completely flush connection. Collapse home 
come with that left high kick from Godbeer, but here we go. This is the end of the fight right now. And you'll see this big knee. Oh. Totally elevates Paul Taylor, lifts his feet off the ground. Wow. And look, he takes it though, Chris. Don't forget the referee stopped it with Chris, with the kicks and the punches. Man, what a performance from Mark Godbeer. Ladies and gentlemen, the future of the heavyweight division has arrived with your new Bama heavyweight champion. Unbelievable stuff here, and you can see what it means to Mark Godbeer. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the 21st century. Now is the time. Now is the best time to be a martial arts champion. And these two guys coming in here, unbelievable fight. Now is the best reason to be why. Ended four minutes, 47 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO and new heavyweight champion of the world. What a perfectly, uh... You're bad looking in person, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> what a great technical performance tonight. You. Did you train to do that? I trained to do that, guys. I really worked my wrestling, my takedown defense. Everyone knows my bread and butter is my stand-up. My wrestling's coming on now. I'm defending the shots, defending the takedowns. That's why my friends call me the hand, baby. <laughs> How, 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 con how conscious were you, was you of his power early? Very conscious, Dave. I knew I couldn't, uh, I couldn't engage, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Paul. I had to stay on my back foot, pick him off, be patient. I really... F Let's have a look through this... Uh, We're here! Walk, walk me through it. Um, I just picked him off, you know, fainted. You see me there and I fainted the right hand through the knees. He got sloppy of his takedowns, and I knew the knees would, uh, once he started getting sloppy, I thought, that's it. Knees, baby, knees. What does it mean to you, what does it mean to you to have this uh, Bama title now? I've been plugging at this for eight years, you know. I've had some big ups and downs. I broke my neck, had a massive injury. I come back from it, and I'm back, guys. Anyone in the UK heavyweight division, I'm back and I'm a different fighter. And I welcome anyone in that top four or five now. Let's have it. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Godbeer.